In this video, I'm going to be covering a topic that a lot of beginners have trouble with, and that is immutability in Python. Because it might not be that obvious, by the way, we can change strings and tuples that they are actually immutable types. For example, if we have, let's say, this text of type string, and we're just going to say hello here, and later we can decide to change this text by typing in text equals text plus exclamation mark. And of course, that has to be a string. But when we actually print this, we're going to get hello with the exclamation mark. But I thought that a string was an immutable type. So how were we able to actually add these two together? And the same thing goes for tuples. Let's pretend we have some coordinates, which are of type tuple. And this tuple will follow the signature of a float and a float. And that will equal, let's say, 1 and 2. Those are my secret coordinates. Now, for whatever reason, we're going to add a third coordinate. So here we're going to type in coordinates plus equals 3. Now, when we print these coordinates, it's obviously not going to work because we need to create a tuple here. So I'll add a comma. But once we add these coordinates, we're going to have 1, 2 and 3 but I thought tuples were immutable. So how was this operation possible? Very briefly, I just want to mention that if you're interested in mastering the Python language or learning a skill that can help you with your future job, check out my website, indently.io. I provide full Python courses that can help you achieve a higher level of programming. So on the website, you can browse many courses. And as soon as you select a course, you can tap on Start Learning and it's going to take you to Udemy. And you might have also noticed that there is a massive discount. If you use the link in the description box down below, you'll have a coupon automatically applied to your purchase. And all courses are backed by a 30 day money back guarantee. So if the course doesn't feel right for you, no problem. Anyway, that's all I wanted to mention. Sorry for the interruption, but now let's get back to the actual video. Well, this operation was possible because we did something quite inefficient in terms of memory. And that is we created a whole new variable just to make this simple change. And we can demonstrate that by printing the ID of our coordinates before we do the operation. So here I'm going to type in ID and we'll just type in before. All right, let's actually do that the other way around. And I'm going to also type in after. And as soon as we run this, you'll see that the IDs will have changed completely before and after the change. These are two separate IDs, which means to make this small change, we had to create a whole new variable. We didn't change the original tuple in any way. We just created a whole new variable with that updated value. So you'll notice that with some immutable data types, you can still update the value. Just keep in mind that if a data type is immutable, you're never truly changing that value. You're just updating it and creating a whole new variable that's holding that updated value. And actually, if we were to type in coordinates and use dot notation, you'll see that we have no mutable methods that come with tuples. If you try to index it, if you say tuple at the index of zeros equal to one, you will get an exception because it does not support that mutable operation. So why is it important to understand this? Well, for one, if you're working with a lot of text, let's go back to our text example, which is quite simple. But if you're working with a lot of text and each time you want to concatenate two strings together, then this can potentially lead to a huge loss in performance. But of course that matters on how many string operations you're doing, how performant you want your program to be, if you're running your script maybe once per day, you can have the least efficient program in the universe and no one will care. But if you're running your script, let's say thousands of times or even millions of times a day, who knows what operation you're trying to perform, the time loss you get from not understanding immutable types is massive because creating a new variable each time you want to perform this operation just isn't efficient. And I guess I'll also show you that strings do not support assignment either. Of course, you can index them, but as soon as you try to change something in them directly, such as the H to an A, you're going to get another error. That string does not support object assignment. Anyway, just remember that immutable types cannot be changed. And it's not a feature that is broken. And it's not the devs that had too much to drink when they were creating this. It's just how Python works. Anyway, that's actually all I wanted to cover in today's video. Do let me know what you think about all this in the comment section down below. 
And with all that being said, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. As always, at the end of the video, you get a bonus. Today I have this new espresso cup and it's actually been quite cool because I can just pour the coffee in here. And I think it looks quite cool.